Hi, everyone. This is Terry, and welcome back to the podcast, Digging Through Dominoes. This is the podcast where we look at the dominoes of our past, how they were set out for us, how we can look at those dominoes, either reshuffle, draw some new ones, and change our game for the future. Today, I wanted to talk about something that is is pretty controversial, especially in my life, and that is solo travel. Can you get mental health benefits from traveling alone? From experience, I can tell you, I have both sides of the coin. I'm going to tell you kind of what those are. But most most therapists have told me in my past, travel by yourself. There was one problem with that. They were right in telling me I needed to get alone. They were wanting me to, wanting me to find myself. Here's the problem with what happened the first time I tried this. It was after my parents died. I was in a deep state of depression. I was breaking, literally, emotionally, falling apart. I have been in a situation where my my rules and my walls were, were very well confined. They were very well drawn, and you don't step out of those boundaries. When my parents died, I felt like a kite whose string had been cut, and I was floating through the sky aimlessly. That was a time I should not have been traveling alone. I had not hit the worst part of my life yet. That was still to come. Surprise. And it came through partly through traveling alone and not knowing myself. Being desperate to find out who I was, but I had no boundaries of my own. I just leapt without consideration. And it led to some very unfortunate, very wrong situations. Do I wish I could change them? No. Why? Do you know the lessons I learned from everything? I think that's one of the biggest things of being 60 years 60, speak Terry, 60 years old. And progressing the way I have, being at the point in my life now that I can look back and say, hey, that sucked. That was a wrong move. When at the time, I felt like I was going through life with a blindfold. It wasn't me. I had like like a skin over me that was not me. It was a facade and it was falling off quickly. Get back to our solo travel My therapist had very, very strongly recommended it to get me out of the stressful situations that were happening in my home at the time, which, as I said, was a good idea. I didn't know how to react because I had no identity of my own at that time. I was borrowing the identities from my mother, from my aunts, from my grandmother, from my father, from my husband, from my children from what I thought I should be instead of really looking at who I was and how that set me up for a huge fall to make major mistakes, to fly into places literally blindly and not have my own ground rules, my own self-respect. I was still looking for something on the outside And I wasn't searching for anything on the inside. It was total and utter chaos. And a lot of trouble came from that. Being on the other side, which I feel these last three or four years of of really intense therapy, have allowed me to grow, 
to become much more self-aware, much more confident. I feel like the Terry that was meant to be is finally here. Is she perfect? No. Am I working on it? Yes. Do I want to be perfect? No. I want to be the best version of me that I can be. Lately, I've been doing some solo traveling. Small trips. I I went to Washington, D.C. for a week, which was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I did see some family there that I hadn't seen in quite some time. That in itself was amazing. But then I was let out on the streets of Washington, D.C. by myself. Everyone flew home and I stayed. I walked the streets of that city in tears. Not of sorrow, not of fear or confusion, but of sheer joy. I was alone in a city that I had always wanted to go to. I was in the city that our founding fathers walked. I was in the city that my father walked. I saw so many things, but I think the best thing, one of the, one of the, the best things I think that came from that was I was on my own schedule. I didn't have to worry about someone waking up, you know, three or four hours earlier than I did. I didn't have to worry about what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do they want to do? I did what I wanted to do. I saw what I wanted to see. I went where I wanted to go. Now, this is, you know, almost 10 years or more after my first solo traveling mishaps, which were absolutely a nightmare and helped to destroy me even more. And so I was afraid. I was afraid at first. I didn't trust myself. But each day it got easier and easier. And here are, I wanted to let you know a few quotes on travel and mental health. Travel and mental health pretty much go hand in hand. Everyone knows you need a vacation. You need to relax. You need to unwind. You need to recharge. I think a lot of us are afraid to do that on our own because we don't know ourselves. We're afraid of ourselves. We're afraid of the decisions that we might make, which I should have been at 10 years ago. But this says travel is great for relieving stress, improving your general outlook on life and for your health. According to a and I don't have the study here, but according to a 2013 study with people aged 25 to over 70, 80% of respondents had travel, so, said solo travel improved their general mood and outlook on life. And 75% said that it decreased their stress levels. When I was in D.C., I had no stress. It, it was probably one of the first times in my life I had been stress-free. Now, last my last birthday, when I turned 60, it was kind of chaotic. There were things done for me that I very much appreciate, but I think my expectations were very different because of my childhood being abandoned, being neglected, and never really being celebrated. And so... It sort of blew up. And at that point, I realized I did not need to put on my kids or my family my expectations because I had a shitty childhood on days that were special to me. If I wanted someone to celebrate me, I needed to celebrate me. So I let people know on my birthday and Mother's Day, From now on, I will be traveling. This Christmas season has taught me the same thing. I believe I'll also be traveling on Christmas and during that time. There's several reasons for that. If if there are different expectations for holidays or no holidays or what's going to happen, it's a real cause of stress. I don't want to put anyone in the stress 
of having to try to live up to my expectations. And I don't want to not be able to celebrate and have joy. So on my birthday, this last year, in 2022, when I turned 60 years old, I decided I'm going to start on my bucket list and I'm going to start from start from the very top, the place I wanted to go most. I am traveling to Greece for my birthday, London, Athens, and then Santorini, and then back to Athens, back to London, and then back to Portland. Originally, I wasn't going to go solo, but my traveling companion was denied a passport. So I going on my own. I have invited a girlfriend to go with me. And I think that would be would be fun because I'm still going out there. I'm still celebrating me. I'm 60. I don't want to sit here and knit, bake bread, and, you know, do crochet or, or whatever. I'm not bashing that. I'm just saying that is not me. There are places I want to see. I want to be friendly. I want to speak to people. I want to learn things. I want to see things. I want to photograph things. Now, one thing that I can say is what is mentioned here, and that's about solo travel anxiety. And that sometimes traveling alone can be the best way to go. It allows you to get to know yourself on a deeper level. It allows you to be the sole person to make decisions on what's going to happen. You don't have to worry about waking up at six in the morning. You don't have to worry if you want to stay out until three in the morning. You don't have to worry if you want to walk down these streets that are safe, which I need to lo- needed to learn, and take photographs. You can speak people without worrying what someone else is going to say. You can truly find and be yourself. It says traveling alone can help you fight depression. When you explore places and pamper yourself, it can help in curing mild depression. And the more time you spend in solitude or traveling solo, the more you can keep your depression at bay. So I just got back from a winter trip to Leavenworth, Washington. It's just a short little trip. It's a five-hour drive, and it was gorgeous. I saw things I wanted to see. I could film what I wanted to film. And I have to say, when I came home, I was gone probably four days. My mood was lifted. I had no stress. I felt amazing. After two weeks of being home, it's all back. Even the World Health Organization recognizes that travel is beneficial for emotional, mental health. I'm going to read you a few things that they've got going here. It can, trib- it can contribute to a happier and more fulfilling life. And these are nine reasons they say solo travel or travel in general is good for your health and your mental health. It gives you opportunities to try new things and meet new people. I am a people person. I love people. I love talking to people. I love asking them questions. I love learning about their culture. I love learning about their lives. Everyone has a story to tell. And I love learning these stories. A lot of times it makes me feel not quite so alone in my own journey with mental health, with depression, with the things that I have struggled with. It can also, and I have found this very true, it can increase your empathy toward other people. That's really interesting to me. Because you're traveling and you're learning, I mean, even if you're you're going in the States, you're traveling from state to state, the cultural differences can be huge. I remember the differences when I moved from Texas to Seattle, Washington, and oh my gosh, how broadening was that? It was culture shock. And then moving from Seattle to the Portland area, that was culture shock again. Going to Washington, D.C. was culture shock. One thing I found, in Portland, people are pretty rude, pretty flat out rude in my experience. 
in Washington, D.C., and I'm not sure what it was about. Maybe it was my attitude towards Washington. Everyone was so kind. They were so polite. They were so generous. They were so friendly. And like I said, was it them or was it my attitude with traveling to a place I've always wanted to be? I don't know. Maybe a little bit of both. Okay, the second thing they have is activities like walking, hiking, and skiing in scenic areas can help you become more hopeful. A 2020 study found that people who are consciously aware of the vistas and objects around them on a walk reported being more hopeful and upbeat than other walkers. So you need to immerse yourself in your surroundings. Now, the first thing, one of the things that happened to me, one of the things that happened to me in Washington, it was like one of my very first experiences. I'm unpacking and I realized I forgot something I needed from Sephora. So I'm looking up Sephora and it was just a couple of blocks away from where I was staying. I was staying at the Hotel Washington, which is an incredible, incredible hotel with a beautiful view of the Washington Monument. I found a Sephora a couple of blocks away. I walk my little self up, well, not little self, my tall self up to Sephora. I go in, I find more than I needed. I come out and I'm lost because it's my first day in the city and I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. I have no idea. I'm relying on my phone. I look down on my phone and I have no clue. I looked up at the street sign to try and find where the heck I was. And on the street sign, it said, where Lincoln's legacy lives. My heart skipped. I looked down the street and there was Ford's Theater. Across the street was the Peterson House where President Lincoln died. I didn't have to ask anyone. I didn't have to ask permission. I made a beeline for Ford's Theater and did the tour. I got to see the presidential box, which by the way, if you go, it is a replica. Um, long story behind that, it is a replica, but it's very true to how it looked the night President Lincoln was shot. Then I went across to the Peterson house, and I love history, so I was just so stoked to see all of this. And it is 98% original. The bed President Lincoln died in. I mean, I mean, a lot of you guys don't You have different interests. Mine, I love history. So I was just so excited to see and soak in all of this history. So that was something that I would never have been able to do had I not made this solo trip to Washington, D.C. I would have been wondering what everyone else wanted to do and probably followed suit with or had been very uncomfortable with if people wanted to go with me, but I knew they didn't want to go with me. They didn't want to go to where I wanted to go. Going back to what this this paragraph was speaking about, the study and being more hopeful if you are aware of your surroundings, I found very true when I was in Washington. My gosh, I just every day cried because just pure joy. I got lost one night. My phone was not cooperating with me. I didn't have my coordinates down. And with the way security is around the White House, they they close off streets and you have no idea and you've got to try and find your way around them. It's really not that hard. But for me, it kind of got a little like confusing. But you know what? I had to trust myself, which gave me another confidence boost that I was capable, I could find my way around. And I made it back to my hotel, went up to the view rooftop restaurant, has a beautiful view of Washington, DC, ordered a wonderful drink and had an incredible dinner. And I was just on the top of the world. All right. And the World Health Organization also talks about, it provides new and different cultures, which can help increase your empathy towards others, improve your overall tolerance, reduce biases, 
or biases and even decrease frustration. Now, that was one thing I was really worried about was being frustrated on this trip, but I wasn't. And the people I spoke with, you know, I made, I made a decision months ago, maybe maybe a year ago or so. When I saw people, I wanted to compliment them. I wanted to, nothing phony, weird stuff, but something about them. I love your shoes. Where do you get your hair cut? Your makeup is flawless. That shirt looks really nice. Where did you get it? Something to make them feel good and something to break down this division that I feel has been forced upon us, especially in the last three years. So that's something that I really had a lot of fun doing in Washington and in Leavenworth as well. In Leavenworth, mainly, I took a lot of photographs. If you're watching the video version of this, I will drop some photographs in here, but I am also going to do, on my YouTube channel, I am going to do a couple of vlogs about the different trips that I did, and you know that puppy's coming with me to Greece, and I'm gonna film that entire trip as well. Okay, the third thing they're talking about is travel. Travel is great for relieving stress, stress and I, I kind of feel they're repeating themselves. Stress and improving your general outlook in life. It helps your brain function better and boosts creativity. I find that very interesting. It says immersing yourself in new cultures increases your mind's ability to move between different ideas, think more deeply, and integrate thoughts. That's something I have trouble with. Is it because I've been in solitude for so long that I have trouble integrating my thoughts, that I have trouble with some of these things? It could be. They go on to say that foreign experiences increase both cognitive flexibility and depth of being integrative or the ability to integrate your thoughts says Adam Galinsky, professor and author of numerous studies on the connection between creativity and international travel. Makes sense. I remember one time when I was Mex in Mexico, and I could remember some of the Spanish that I, I knew, but I couldn't remember at all. And I really had to dig it out to speak to this woman in a bakery about what I wanted. And I did it, but you know, it took some thought to bring that out. And I remember that time, and it, it, it was great. So I can see, I mean, I'm going to have to figure out how to speak with the people that don't speak English in Greece, how to get around, how to navigate what I want to see. That's going to broaden my mind. That's going to broaden my ability to think, my intellectual processing, everything. It also says time away can increase your energy and productivity at home and at work. A Harvard Business Review study of over 400 travelers found that 94% of respondents had as much or more energy after coming back from a good trip. So book that holiday and crush your work goals when you return. That was something I was always adamant about in my marriage before was planning vacations, making sure that we got away twice a year for seven to 10 days at a time to recharge. Not only were we raising a heck of a lot of children, the business we were in is very competitive and it's very, it's very stressful. And to be able to do it, you need to get out, you need to recharge, you need to unwind so you can come back and go further. You don't reach that burnout point. Taking a trip by yourself helps you do good, which, which helps you feel good. Now let's see what they're talking about there. I didn't reread. I didn't read through this first. Some evidence suggests that helping others can promote physiological changes in the brain linked with happiness. Yeah, it can. You know, one of the things I'm doing right now is I am finding myself at a lot of venues and I just subscribed or I just joined the Cascade Blues Association. I'm going to, I want to volunteer for them and 
you know, I'm really looking forward to that, to helping them. But I've been going to venues that my where my friends' bands are and taking photographs for them. And it's therapeutic for me because I know I'm giving them something that they need, that they enjoy, and I'm getting the benefits of therapy and making them happy and making myself happy. So it's like a win-win situation here. It goes into also saying that spending money during your holiday in restaurants, attractions, and even locally made souvenirs help support the 330 million people who rely on the tourism sector for their livelihoods. And I found that very true in a lot of my travels before to see the smiles on people's faces when you genuinely appreciate their goods, things that they have made to sell. And when you appreciate them and you see them smiling, it does something for you. And it's not like a selfish thing. You just feel better when you can do something for someone else. A wellness trip can contribute to stronger mental health. I feel they're being repetitive here, but it's true. On a wellness retreat, which I think most of mine are, I consider them wellness retreats because I can meditate, I can pray, I can think, I can read. I can take in the scene, the sceneries, the smells, everything I wouldn't be able to do if I was concentrating on another person or persons in my trip. Now, I'm not someone that likes to take take trips with groups of couples because everyone wants to do something differently. And for me, I find that frustrating a lot of times. But, you know, I would really like to take like an all girls trip. I think that would be fun because it's celebrating women. And that's been something that I haven't really been able to do. But I think that would be absolutely wonderful. All right, so here are a few more benefits from studies I've read about the wonderful effects of solo travel. It builds self-confidence. Yes. Now, I have to say, when I was first solo traveling all those years ago, when I was not in a good place, it did just the opposite. It made me more afraid, more clingy, more, I just wasn't in the right mind space. So I would, for me, I would suggest, and I am not a doctor, I'm just someone that's been through this. Make sure you're in a good space. Make sure you know yourself. Make sure you feel comfortable with yourself. Heck, I didn't even know, like I said, who I was. But it does. It helps build your self confidence. Says taking the leap or taking the leap to go into the unknown on your own is brave. Now, my daughter a few years ago came up and said, Mom, I'm going to Bali. And I'm like, What? I'm going to Bali. I have it all planned out. That girl had the time of her life. And you know, it may be something she might not get the chance to do again. And I was so proud of her. She did wonderful. She just had a great time. And I could see how it boosted her self-confidence. And the experiences that she had were some that she would never have been able to get had she not made that leap. It says there's so much growth that comes from pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. For me, that's what it was, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I'm kind of always looking over my shoulder for someone to tell me if it's right or if it's wrong, if I should go, if I should not. But I have found lately with my solo traveling, even if it's going to the beach or even if it's not travel, if it's just going downtown to shoot photographs, I have more confidence in myself. Now, this says there's nothing that pushes you outside your perceived limits quite like traveling solo. Yeah. I mean, you're in that airport by yourself. You're on that airplane by yourself. You're on that cruise ship by yourself. What are you going to do? You have the choice when you do this. Are you going to just sit on the deck and watch the sunset, which is perfectly fine? 
hang out in the casino, which is perfectly fine, see some shows? Are you going to meet people? I know my aunts have met people on cruises that they have been friends with for years. I remember a cruise my grandmother went on. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how old she had to have been. She died when she was 56, so I don't even know if she was quite 50 at the time. But it was through Rio, down to uh, Brazil, through the Panama Canal, and she just had a wonderful time. She went with her sister, and I, I remember hearing all of the stories, and I always was very... I always wanted to be like her. She just was someone I really looked up to. Very adventurous, very much fun. And I don't think the woman had any fear. (laughs) Now this says you can develop a can-do attitude and become more relaxed and comfortable figuring out things on your own. Now for someone like me, someone that is an abuse survivor, someone that has had adverse childhood experiences, that's hard because you've been made to rely on other people for so long that we tend to doubt ourselves a lot. And I have found with self-travel, you have to have that can-do attitude. And one of the things I think is interesting, you know, when I was in Leavenworth, I could go out at any time I wanted to go or I could just stay in the room and do nothing. It was my choice. And the stress, like I said, was zero. It was absolutely zero. So you become more relaxed and comfortable figuring out things on your own and not just in the cities you travel, but it goes on to future jobs or any other thing that you might encounter in your life. So you're really kind of building up your personal resume, building up your personality and confidence in yourself for anything that you may decide to undertake in another realm. On your own, you have the freedom to do, to do that. <laughs> On your own, you have the freedom to choose the locale, what you're going to do, where you gonna go, where you're gonna go? Are you gonna go to the beach? Or are you gonna watch the beach from a from a beach, you know, a beachfront tavern? You know, I think one of my favorite things in Key, in um, Key West is sitting at one of the beachfront taverns, shooting oysters and just watching what's going on. I love it. I love to people watch. And the more I see other people having a good time, the more I have fun, the more it gives me joy seeing others laugh and play and enjoy everything that is out there. You can decide how you're going to spend your time. Like I said, are you going to go on the weekend, the weekdays, on a holiday? You can choose anything, any one of those or everything in between. You are in charge. And believe me, for someone that has felt, as many of us do, if you're watching this channel, we have felt that we don't have the capability to make those decisions or we start to doubt ourselves because we've been gaslit for so many years. It's so liberating. And it has let me know, hey, I know what the heck's going on. I've got this down. Says when you travel in pairs, it limits options because you have to find places that will accommodate both of you. And they may not might may not want to go explore some of the places that you do. And I found that true. And I end up generally being the one that says, okay, we won't do that. There have been times it has been the other way, but when you solo travel, there are no restrictions. If you want to go see that, you go see it. And as we talked about earlier, it boosts your problem-solving capabilities, your problem-solving creativity. Traveling rarely goes the way it's planned. Something always pops up, like I forgot stuff and I had to find a store to go get it. But what if you have a flat tire and you're in a foreign country? What are you going to do? 
You're going to have to figure that stuff out. First of all, I'm not renting a car, so I should be just fine. You know, things can happen like your seat can get lost, your flight can get delayed, and you've got to figure that out. You don't have someone there to rely on. It's you. It's all within you. And all of this goes to building back that foundation that was stripped away from us as infants, as children, as a spouse, as a parent. It's us. It's on us for us. Now, I was used to doing that and planning trips for my children and my family. But I didn't plan them for myself. I planned them for my kids to have fun, for my kids to have memories. It's my turn for me to learn, for me to grow, for me to enjoy what I can enjoy after all of those years of devoting my life to my family when I was well. We won't go on those other years right here, right now, because, you know, we've done that before and we'll do it again, I'm sure. You know, another thing, you know, I have to say is where do the best stories come from? They come from something that's gone awry and it's like, oh my gosh, look what happened. Look what I was faced with and I had to find a way out, which is kind of like the story of my life. But when we put it into travel, I think it really helps us to be able to transfer that to other parts of our lives, to other parts of our personalities, and take control, use that creativity, use what we've learned during the solo travel in our own lives where we feel confined, help break out of that box a little bit. It fosters self-discovery. Yes, It is one of the best ways when you jump out of your comfort zone to know who you are. Now, I have to clarify this again. When I went to Thailand, I was not in the proper state of mind. I would like to go back to Thailand in the state of mind I'm in now so I could enjoy and not fear, so I could travel and explore and not be exploited. It really, in my opinion, has a lot to do with the state of mind you're in, your emotional health at the time, your emotional well-being, whether or not you should travel solo or not. Now, I went to Thailand on a whim. It was not good. I was running from me. And that's not what you can do. That's that's not a wise thing to do when you're solo traveling. You need to be running to learn about yourself, to see what you want to see. Discover who you are and what you are capable of. You're really, when you do this, you're setting your own boundaries. You're expanding your world. You're expanding the way you converse, the way you see. You're expanding your empathy. I remember being in Mexico before, years and years ago, realizing there were only two classes in Mexico at that time. This was probably 40 years ago. There were the very wealthy and there were the very poor. And that was a real culture shock for me coming from America. I think that helped give me a little bit more compassion than I had had as basically an entitled American that had a, a pretty comfortable way of life in growing up um, materialistically. And then when you look at people that are so happy that have nothing It really gives you a different perspective on the world and on your own life. And you're able to appreciate things that you have a lot more. One of the things that you really have to keep in mind, especially as a female solo traveler, is safety. I did not take that into account when I went to Thailand and I paid the price dearly. Now, when I went this last trip to Washington, D.C., I had safety in the forefront of my mind. I walked with confidence. I knew I was there alone. I tried to blend into the city. Now going to Greece, I have researched what to wear, what not to wear, how to blend in and not look like a tourist, how to walk and project confidence and ability. That alone really helps to ward off any potential trouble. One thing I had come up 
when I was in DC was I went to call an Uber and then I saw there were two people, two men that wanted to ride share on the Uber. All I saw were their names and it was like, no, I'm sorry. I will pay more, but I'm not going to ride share with someone that could take me out. I'm just going to pay the extra and then do it myself. My former self would probably have said, why not? Because I wouldn't have thought through the process. You know, another thing that not really, I don't plan on retiring in Greece, but another thing to do is look at the housing, look at how people live, look at their day-to-day lives and not, you know, venture out of the tourist areas and see how these people are really making it day-to-day and where they gain their happiness. You, I think you can learn a lot from that, watching others, watching their way of life and how it differs, differs from the way of life we have here as Americans or wherever you may be watching or listening to this podcast from. Another thing on safety is when you find some locals that you can trust, you know, if you're staying at an Airbnb, if you're staying at a hotel, if you're people that you can trust ask them where is safe for tourists and places that might not be so safe. Me, didn't do that all those years ago. This time, I did that. And it just makes, you're going to have uncertainty anyway, but it really helps give you a backup of, okay, they've told me not to go there, so I'm going to stay away from that place. And I'm going to keep my eyes open Walk with confidence. Be ready. I mean, use your elbow, your thumbs. Think ahead of what might happen if you're traveling by yourself and you need to protect yourself. You don't want to be flashing your jewelry. You don't want to be flashing money, anything like that. But also remember the parts of your body that can do great damage if you need to protect yourself. Think that through before you're in the situation. It's also, you know, it goes kind of without saying, it's a lot cheaper to travel alone. You're only paying for your meals, your drinks, your airfare. You know, the hotel's probably going to be the same, but it can be a lot cheaper. And sometimes that helps take some of the stress away. Or, hey, it's your vacation. If you want to splurge on a $200 lunch, splurge on a $200 lunch, because that's going to bring you memories that you are not going to be able to have otherwise. It's all up to you. It's all going back to build that foundation that was kept down for so long. It frees your mind. It frees the way you think. It actually helps build the way you think by thinking of the big picture and not having tunnel vision. I think another thing that is freeing in traveling solo, is if you've been through a lot of trauma, if you've had a lot of personal upheaval, traumas, things that you'd rather forget, you can choose not to go to those places that may remind you of that. You know, there there are some places I don't want to go back to. So I need to keep that in mind and avoid those places. But there are other places that are going to do the exact opposite. They're not going to trigger me. They're going to let me lay low. They're going to let me take my stress down several notches. They're going to let me see who I am and let you see who you are. You know, I, I had a great fear of being alone for years and years and years and years and years. For several reasons, you know, my mother, as you know, would tell me she was going to put me in the garbage can for the trash men to take away and would tell me they didn't speak English. I was told time and time again, I'm leaving you. I'm getting a divorce. I'm leaving you. I'm getting a divorce. I mean, it was like a a weekly thing that was used as a manipulation is the way I saw it. Um, And so I have a great fear of abandonment. I have a great fear of not being good enough. You know, I have, I know what my bag of things are. I have anxiety. I have abandonment issues. I have CPTSD. Being alone 
was always one of my biggest fears. I'm not afraid anymore. I know right now in this moment, if I had to, I could live alone in the place of my choosing and be perfectly happy with me. I like me now. And these trips that I take only add to how much, how in depth, I guess, I can go with knowing myself and realizing, hey, I'm not afraid of myself. When I'm here, I can go have a, you know, a juice on the, uh, on the beach or on the veranda. I can have a drink. I can read a book. I can just watch the people go by because I've, I've, I've built that, that courage that a lot of us just don't have because we've been kept down and the reins have been pulled in on us for far, far too long. And just to wrap up here, here are a few reminders of the things that solo travel can bring to you and that it has brought to me and will continue to bring to me. Time management. I'm, I have not ever been a good time manager. I'm going to have to be. I am learning that as we go. Travel is free as a bird. No strings attached. You see what you want to see. Take your own time. Be you. Be true to yourself. Meeting and greeting the locals is always wonderful to see how they live, to be able to go and watch their festivals, learn something about them. It always brings a deeper understanding of yourself and what you've been through when you realize what other people are going through and have been through. You don't have to have a fixed plan. It's just, hey, I'm going to do this. You know, when you travel with a big group, there's a plan. I have never been a fan of group tours because it's fixed and I don't like that. I want to do it on my own. Now, when I go to Athens, I am going to be on a group tour. Athens is a big city And that's one thing I do need the safety of a group tour for, to see that. And I don't want to rent a car or anything. So I really do. It's really the the first and only time probably that I will ever do a group tour because I like the freedom of being able to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, see what I want to see. You may find the new you when you travel alone. You may be able to broaden, like I'm going to be trying, my photography skills. I'm taking my camera gear with me. I take it with me everywhere I go, but I I see the world in photographs. I want to capture those and put them together, and I want to see where some of the most beautiful photographs in the world have been taken. I want to boost my confidence. Every day, something happens that is, you know, here in, in in my norm that kicks at my confidence. I need to take control of my confidence and build it in every way I can. And this is going to be something of a lifestyle change for me in building my confidence in that area. I can do this. I can see this. I can learn this language. I can converse with someone that doesn't speak English and I don't speak their language. And I can appreciate. Also, You know, if you're afraid to talk to strangers, you're going to have to talk to strangers. It's going to ease your fear in that way. It's going to break that cycle of fear that you have. And you'll be able, because you're going to be forced to speak with strangers. When you get back home, you're going to see, hey, guess what? I did it there. And they didn't speak English or very little English. What's stopping me from doing it at home? Not a thing because you just accomplished that overseas. And one of the last things that I'm seeing that they're talking about is that it is an achievement. For many of us, we don't see the achievements that we have made. We see and are told of the failures that we are. Solo traveling is an achievement and it's one of the best achievements. You have to have guts to go out and travel by yourself You know, solo travel isn't for everyone. It wasn't for me back then. Like I said, it's, I don't think it's for anyone that is not a a stable 
mental condition. I mean, I was I was seriously degrading when I started my sur, sur, um, solo travel before, you know, more than a decade ago. I was in the worst place in my life. And now I feel it is going to be the best part of my life now going forward, seeing these places, seeing everything, just being me, having fun, stepping out of my box, celebrating me, celebrating customs, meeting people, learning, seeing, and just being proud of myself for jumping out of the box. Now, this is the end of season one. I will be back in January to start season two. If any of you want to be vetted or feel like you may want to come on as a guest, I'm going to start doing guests in season two. And you can email my assistant. I'll put the email in the description box below because I can't remember what it is. But yes, and my assistant will get back with you um, in the email, put what you'd like to speak about, a little bit about yourself, the traumas, the way you've come through it. And let's get some things set up. Of course, you know, I, I, I have to be prudent. Things have to be vetted. And my assistant's more than capable, capable of doing that. So please join in. Let's start talking. Let's heal together. I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, very happy holiday season. And I wish the most incredible year of your life starting in 2023. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for ending out this year with me on this podcast. And we will be back in January. Happy holidays, everyone.